what's up you guys, this is Rob from Gay Guy Plays, and this time the hype train is pulling in with a big load of balls and gold when we take a look at Vauban Prime Access. So I'm gonna be honest with you, Vauban isn't necessarily my favorite frame of the bunch, so I wasn't super excited. Until of course I caught that damn trailer that made him look epic as fuck. Equipped with the Axe Stiletto Prime and the Fragor Prime, as well as a few golden accessories, I have to admit that this one is a pretty solid Prime access. Now as you all know, this is just the overview and full length reviews on the weapons as well as the new rundown for Vauban will be soon to follow, so keep an eye out for that. And if you guys have any questions about drop locations, I will leave them in the description box below. Now let's start off with our sexy as fuck Axe Stiletto Prime. Dear lord god these things look beautiful. I always thought that the classic version was a good looking weapon, but man they really managed to kick it up a notch. I love the shape, I love the amount of gold because let's face it, sometimes they don't do enough and sometimes they do way too much. This is like the Goldilocks of gold accentuation and it is much appreciated. Now as for the stats, you'll probably already know what I'm gonna say about this, but let's just jump in. So its base damage literally doubled from 18 to 36, but its fire rate went down from 10 to 7.08 shots per second. Now that is still a net positive when it comes to burst damage, especially when considering its magazine went from 28 up to 40. This all says to me that the weapon has become a lot more ammo efficient, which is very nice. Now onto the part that confuses the fuck out of me. First off, its critical multiplier went up, but its critical stats stayed the same, while its status chance went up from 15 to 30%. Why are you gonna up its critical multiplier but not its critical chance and then bamboozle me with a status chance increase? Well, it is slightly disappointing, this is a definite upgrade. All I gotta say is that hopefully this doesn't take the Axomati out of the running to be primed, because frankly, status isn't quite where it needs to be quite yet to really sell me. However, this does come with an extra V polarity, so that makes me feel feel a teensy bit better. Alrighty, moving on to something whose stats got a bit tastier, we've also got the Fragor Prime. They knocked it out of the park with this one as well. I think that my only complaint is that it's got a pretty cool animation when you hold for a charge attack. It looks like the side bits are all whizzing around and it's so fucking cool. But I haven't seen that animation trigger on anything else. It would have been really nice to see it spinning while channeling or something. But as for the model itself, I love how they carried over the bars in the classic version and translated it into the details that come across the side. I love Love it. I absolutely love it. Now, while looks matter, stats is what will be key, since it's got a lot of stiff competition in its category. Its base damage got a boost from 115 up to 130, which isn't massive, however it's also got a boost to its critical multiplier, going from 2 up to 2.5, and its critical chance jumps from 20 up to 35, oh my god! Its channeling has even gone up from 1.5 times up to 1.8. The only thing that really hinders this is that it's had a slight redux to its attack speed, from 8.33 to 2.8, which honestly I can't really feel. Now keep in mind that the jack attack tag also has 130 base damage, but isn't quite as strong with its critical stats. It does have reach, attack speed, and sparkly bits advantage over the Fragor Prime, but with body count and blood rush, I am more than willing to trade some of that for the Fragor Prime's consistent red crits. And now let's take a look at the man of the hour himself, Vauban Prime, and his bloodborne looking ass. I have to say that before the trailers were released, I was really wondering how they were going to manage to pull it off, since his style is a bit plain, and admittedly, they killed it. However, I do feel like they are borderlining on being a bit too over triangled. Not sure if that's a thing, but we're making it a thing today. It's like they discovered a new shape in the void and they got slightly carried away, but I can't hate them for it because it does look pretty damn sweet. I do have a mild complaint though, his balls are not gold. Why are his balls not gold? That bothers me. Now stats wise he's got a boost to his shields which lets him top out at 740 with a max redirection and a 50 point buff to his armor which may work out quite well with his new potential passive. On the most recent dev stream DE stated that they were considering making his passive an armor increase with each ally in range. All of these changes are fantastic because let's face it, Vauban is amazing at crowd control but he is a bit squishy so it was definitely nice to see him get some needed survivability in order to keep doing his job. He's also got an extra D polarity, which of course I love because who doesn't love the D, am I right? Another interesting change that has come with this update is that his bounce pads now have multiple functionality much like Avara's arrows. A quick tap allows you to swap between bounce pads, trip mines, shred mines which strip armor, and concuss mines which stun and deafen enemies. You can deploy any of these new traps by holding down the ability key, so it does slow you down a little bit, but it's a sacrifice worth making. Now of course this wouldn't be a prime if it didn't have some sort of cool particle effect, and apparently this time it's gas? 
His bounce pads appear gassier and his Bastille definitely looks gassier as well. I'm not sure how I feel about that being a primed effect, but sure why not, right? The one effect that's actually kind of cool that they introduced was that the Primed Vortex now has to be held in place with tethers. If you're in an area with a lot of structures, the grenade will actually attempt to tether itself to the ground and walls. Definitely a much more attractive effect than gas. I mean, true, Vauban wasn't the sexiest of Warframes, but come on DE, why you gotta kick a man while he's down? Now on to Primed accessories, starting with the Citadel of Prime Sign, Donna. Now I actually quite like the back attachment on this one, the design looks really sick, however the actual fabric portion I'm a bit put off by. But I think it's only because Vauban Prime has coat tails and the Cyan Donna has its own set of tails, like you gotta put the brakes on it at some point. That aside, I think it looks halfway decent on some of the less ornate frames because you know, they can handle having a big gold star you riding their backside. Now, last and honestly probably least is the Kiteno Prime Sugatra. So close, DE! You were so close! Tell me why this mechanical chain link looking doodad floats around like a feather. It completely ignores gravity. Since when did chain link things do that? I mean, look at the Kazeru Prime Sugatra. It dangles like normal chain link things are supposed to. And the thing is, you can kind of see where the linking is rigged to it, but it's not. So I am not the happiest camper about this one. So while not everything was a 100% hit, I will say that this Prime Axis is pretty damn solid. Even if I am a bit disappointed in the stat spread of the Axoletto, but don't worry, I will get to testing it out, and I'm sure with several forma, I won't hate its guts completely. The Fragor, however, I am fucking jazzed, and Vauban looks fantastic, so shit, that reminds me of all of the reviews I've gotta get done, so I'm gonna stop rambling, and I'll chat with y'all later. See you soon! Bye!